Hello and welcome to Me, The Wife and Wrexham AFC. A weekly podcast and YouTube channel where we discuss all things Wrexham AFC from the point of view of long-term fans and new fans. So sit back, put your feet up, relax and let's get stuck in. Hello and welcome back to episode 118 of Me, The Wife and Wrexham AFC. Hello. What's coming up on the show, Sean? Well, we talk about Max. We've got a little update on him. Yep. We talk about the Welsh Cup reforms that are on the horizon. Potential. Potential. Yeah. Um, we look back at Tuesday's loss against Stevenage. Yeah. Which we, we won't badger on about too much about that, will we? Not, not no. really, no. Um, but we will go on about our game against <laughs> Northampton Town last Saturday, which was amazing. Um, and we also look ahead at the game we've got on Tuesday against uh, the Wolves under-21s for the EFL Trophy. Once again, we're not going to spend too much time on that, but yeah, we, it's the we EFL, will. It's the EFL Trophy, but I think most people know it as the Bristol Street Motors or do they know it as the EFL trophy? I don't know what they know it as to be honest. I think a lot of people still call it the Pizza Cup because it because it used to be sponsored by Papa John's. So I think a lot of people still say oh the Pizza Cup. Well. But it, call it what you will we'll be discussing it shortly. Yes, in very brief detail. Yes. And also my favorite segment of the show, the quiz. <laughs> you love it. You pretend like you don't like it. I but... love a quiz. But I'm starting to hate quizzes since we started this podcast. Ah, yeah. No, not really. I, if I was better, I'd love it, but I'm not very good. Yeah, I, I think um, I, I, it might be me being a little bit mean, but I, I think... A little bit. I, you know so much more than you did when you started. Yes. You, and that's obvious, and people say that to you, you know, that we meet and all that sort of stuff in the comments. That is true. So if... I was just giving you questions in a quiz about, you know, the, the, specifically about the club. I think you'd have a good chance, but I'd just like to mix it up a little bit. And, you like you know. to make a fool of me is what you do, no. Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> that is untrue. No, I know. I, I just like to make it, you know, you've got to keep pushing the boundaries, haven't you? You can't just settle. You've just got to keep keep pushing on. God, you're, it's like you're explaining our marriage to people. <laughs> I'm joking. Anyway, yeah. should we crack on with the news? Sorry, I don't know. That was louder than I thought it was going to be. Sorry. Yeah, and, um, yeah. So um, a, a little Max update. It's, We've had some intel. Yeah, it's, it hasn't been announced. No, so. it's not. Um, it, it, it's not a huge update. We don't have his medical report or anything <laughs> like that. But <laughs> we haven't bribed his doctor or anything no, like that. No, uh, but we are aware that the injury. This is information without being too much information. It's, you know, it's very sparse. But we do understand that his injury is less severe than the club first feared it or was. Or fans first feared. Yeah. Yes. Um, the, the problem with that little bit of information that we're giving you is we don't know how bad the club initially thought it was. And we also don't know how much better it is. So... Uh, look, he's still going to be out for a while, uh, but I think the general feeling from within the club is he's not going to be out for as long as they first thought he was. He was in the was. fan zone on Saturday. He was having pictures with uh, Luke Bolton, I believe. Yes. Um, so, And he was on his feet. So he's not in crutches or anything like that, which is no. good. No, no, no. no. So, I, yeah. I th I, like we talked about last week with, with the sort of injury he's got, there's quite a wide window for um for, for the type of injury that you get so it's it's all the way from like a sprain which is like your two three week sort of area all the way up to needing surgery um you know so it's quite a quite a broad church of things that that that, that it could be um ultimately he's somewhere in the middle He's not just a sprain and he also doesn't need surgery. Uh, he's somewhere in the middle. I, I think he's probably closer to the sprain end of the spectrum than he is the surgery Which end of the spectrum. News. As you said, he was he was walking around on Saturday. Oh, I, I didn't on, say he was walking around. I said he, he, was, said having, he, was, on, he was standing. <laughs> he's on his, <okay. laughs> he's on his he's feet. He's on his feet without <laughs> the need for crutches or anything like that. So I, I, yes. think, it's, I think it's all positive. Yeah. Um, and I think we just... 
you know, just hang fire. We've got we've got very good replacements at the moment. We'll talk a little bit. Yeah. We'll talk, yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about Dan Scar uh, as as we go through the show. Strength and depth, my friend. Yes, and I think it's something that um, perhaps we've been missing in previous seasons. You know, when when we lost Aaron to an injury, for example, it was very much oh God, what are we going to do now? You know, and oh, he's going to have to come in, or oh, mm. he's not really a central defender, but we'll slot him in there. And yeah, we've got that now. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, so. So, yeah, it's it, it's all good, um, and I, I, I've liked watching Dan Scar over the last couple of games. Yeah. I I thought he's been decent. Yes. I I don't. I think he's very much, um, and, and this it sounds horrible. It, it it's not meant to be. I think he's very much an old fashioned type of defender. No nonsense. Uh, he knows They're like James McLean and Stephen Fletcher. They take yeah, prisoners. perhaps, but he's very much no nonsense. You know, he knows what his job is. Yeah. He knows what his limitations are. He's not going to take the ball down on his chest and start dribbling through the whole team. Or you know, he maybe doesn't have uh, Max's ability to bring the ball forward. And uh, Max always seems to be able to start an attack and and play incisive passes. I don't really think that's. Dan's game, but that's fine because he's a very good defender. So you know, uh, uh, you know, it's he's a different type of player to Max, mm-hmm. but he's do, he's doing a job for us. How old us. is Dan Scar? Yeah, a lot older than Max, I think. I don't think he's a lot older. I think he's in so his Max is twenty two. Yeah, all right, he is older. Yes, but he's not. Uh, you know, I think he's in his late twenties. Let's put it like that. So uh, yeah, T- that to me at the age I am now is still well young. very, very young. Well young. But no, I've been, I've been, I've, yeah, I've been, yeah, I've enjoyed watching him yeah. last couple of games. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all for a defender. But we do miss Max. Yes, we like. Max. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I don't think I've seen anything from. And, and again, I'm not being awful, but I, I don't think I've seen anything from Dan Scar that makes me go, mm, maybe Max won't get back in. I, I, th- I definitely think. There's more to Max's game yeah. than uh, that than there is to maybe Dan Scar's game, mm-hmm. but everything he's done for me has been brilliant. I thought he's been very good. So our next piece of news is it was announced um, last week that Jacob Mendy has been called up for international call up. <laughs> international duty. <laughs> international duty. Yeah. So he will be playing um, the Afcon. Which is the... AFCON qualifiers, they are. Oh, are they? Yes. What does AFCON stand for? American? No, African. African. <laughs> Sorry. African Federation... Uh, of uh, nations. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. We should have done our research. Um, so, yeah, so he's... Uh, he's <laughs> if you gonna... didn't know, you shouldn't have brought it up. I know. Um, so, yeah, he's playing for the... Um, he's being called up for the Gambia team, um, which is um, his... I think that's his background, isn't it? Yeah, Did you call it background. Yeah, African uh, F- F- Federation Cup of Nations. Oh, I got the nations bit right. Well Fair done. play to me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so he'll be playing against Madagascar. They'll Two be games against them. Yeah, home and away. Yes. So congratulations, uh, Jacob. Well, we said we said he'll be playing. He's in the squad. Still, it's still a, a thing, isn't Huge it? Huge achievement. Yeah, yeah a, a really being called re- up for your national team. Yeah, re- really chuffed for him. Um, we. Th- uh, he's the only international call that we've had in our squad I this thought, time yeah, around. I was confused because I thought, um, obviously, James McLean has played for his na- his national team, which is Ireland. That's right. I get confused with Southern Northern Republic, all that jazz. Yeah, I d- let's not get into that because... Oh, it's political. D- d- yeah, move anyway, on. Anyway. Um, <laughs> move on. Yeah, so, um, but I believe that he'd retired... But some, I'm heard somewhere that he may, if he gets called up, he yeah, yeah, may yeah. like. So the manager had a little chat with him right, and okay. said, "Look, um, I I know you've retired, uh, but uh, is the door definitely closed? Because I I would like you in the squad. And I think I don't think James necessarily shut it down. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see on that one. It, it, it's one of them. It's I I don't know, but he ha- officially he's retired. Uh, but it, 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 we'll, we'll see how that one pans out. Mm. But yeah, um, so yeah, next weekend is international break uh, weekend. Um, so Which is bad for us because our game against Lincoln has been postponed. Yes, so uh, um, we'll, uh, there's only two games going on 
uh, in League One next year. We'll come on to next that. Next year? Next week, sorry. <laughs> uh, but we'll come on to that in a bit. Anyway, there'll be a so. few more going on next year. Yes. Um, just a quick one. If you'd like to support the show, uh, you can buy us a coffee. Um, the page to do that on is buymeacoffee.com forward slash uh, me the wife. Uh, a couple of people to say thank you to uh, this week. Dave Lacey. Dave. Dave, big Dave. Big Dave. Uh, we we know Dave. Uh, Dave we... was my old boss. He was. He was. He was my old boss, and he was a great boss. No, I... uh, let's uh, just uh, just to say something quickly. Um, uh, no hate for Dave. Dave wasn't responsible for making Sean redundant. Oh let's... no, he wasn't. <laughs> no, 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 he wasn't. wasn't. It wasn't Dave's decision. So uh, no, yeah. hate, no hate towards no. Dave. No. Uh... <laughs> yeah. No. Um, I do miss Dave, um, and I saw him on Saturday. Yes. So I gave him a big hug, and yeah. So thank you so much, Dave. Thank we really you very appreciate. Much. Appreciate it. <laughs> yes. Uh, another one is Matthew. Uh, he, he left us a message. We really enjoy watching the two of you interact as a married couple uh, and as best friends. Whoa, Whoa that's who not said good that? way. Who said that, Matthew? <laughs> uh, we're 54 years married and we celebrate your success. All the best to you both now and in the future. Thank you very much, Matthew. So that was Matthew and his wife. Matthew and wife. Mr and Mrs. Yes. Thank you. Um, look, we're going to talk a little bit about um, some potential league cup, uh, Welsh Cup reforms. Mm. So... Um, a bit controversy about this, I believe. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure how I feel about it, if I'm perfectly honest. I've got... No, is what I say. Uh, uh, okay, can we explain what it is first? <laughs> yes. So, I'm going to read a statement out. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Wales, uh, Wales's English Football League uh, clubs are in talks about a transformational change which would see them enter a Welsh Cup competition in order to qualify for European football. Um, so, Cardiff City, Swansea City, Wrexham and Newport County play in the English Pyramid and are therefore only able to qualify for European competitions i.e. the Champions League, uh, the Europa League, the Europa Conference League, um, via the Premier League, the FA Cup or the EFL Cup. But discussions have taken place at the four clubs and the Football Association of Wales about the idea of entering the Welsh League Cup, currently known as the Nathaniel MG Cup, uh, for a chance to represent Wales in the Europa Conference League. The statement was much bigger than that, but I've, I have condensed it down. So, can I ask a question? You can. So, obviously, you've got Cardiff, Swansea, Wrexham and Newport. Yes. County. Do When they say represent Wales, does that mean that they that people who are playing for Wrexham... No. So, right. What it means by represent Wales. So uh, if you imagine... It's not like the Euros, I mean, where you no, have no, to no. be a Welsh... No, no, no. no. Nothing Wales. like that. No. So if you imagine um, uh, Man City win the FA Cup, mm -hmm. there would be a place in a European competition for them. Okay. Uh, forget the FA Cup. Let's just go Premier League. Let's make it even simpler. Man City win the Premier League. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They then qualify because of that, for the Champions League, okay. which is a European Cup competition. Um, in doing that, they, they as a club are representing England because they have qualified from an English, English. competition. So okay, that's yeah. what they mean by representing okay. Wales. You don't have to be Welsh or have no, Welsh. No, 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 it's got whatever. nothing. You just have to be, in this instance, you have to be a Welsh club. Right. So you're, you're, you're a Welsh club that has won a Welsh Cup competition, you then go and rep you're the representative for Wales in that European competition. The only competition that, that um, you can qualify for uh, were, by winning this cup is the Europa Conference League. Mm -hmm. Okay, So if you were to rank them, you've got Champions League, Europa League, uh, and then the Europa Conference League. It's like the third... Uh, competition in Europe. Um, so, uh, it's it's quite interesting concept, I would say. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I think you have to think about revenue from these games. Yes. We're obviously in League One at the moment, um, get, gunning for championship, and we all know... I love the way you say gunning. Gunning. Yeah, I like it. Gunning. Why? No, no, no. How not... are you meant to say it? Gunning. No, 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 no. I'm not saying the way you say it. I just like your use of it. 
we're gunning for the. I'd like. I just like it. Sorry to interrupt you. Carry on. We're gunning for the championship. Yeah. We're gunning for the championship. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, we all know that obviously there is a massive step up. Even yeah. though it's even though it's only the, it's the second tier and we're obviously in the third tier, yeah. it's still a massive step up in regards to salary, um, all that jazz. Um, I can't think of anything else that <laughs> costs so salaries. Um, so yeah, so I think if it helps us mm. in that regard, then mm. I may be on board. But you know how I feel about extracurricular games that don't yeah. that are not. Uh, focused on the league. Yes. I I am a league girl. I like the league games. Uh, yes. um, so yeah, so that's how I feel. If it's going to uh, generate re revenue to help us push over the line. Okay, let's 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 talk about revenue then. Uh, first and foremost, I think uh, revenue. Yes, there will be revenue. Obviously, there will be games that will need to be attended by people purchasing tickets. There will be prize money from the competition. So yes, there will be revenue. Mm -hmm. Not only that, there will be revenue that will be cascaded down to Welsh grassroots football. Oh, so okay. it'll cascade through uh, the Welsh sort of pyramid of football and, and, you know, down to grassroots football in Wales as well, uh, which is controlled by the FAW, the uh, Football Association of Wales. There's a nice positive, you know, mm. but by doing it, what you're helping out, um, yeah, you're helping out uh, yeah. football in Wales as yeah, a whole, which can't be a bad thing. It can't be a bad thing. Yeah. Now, um, that where, um, where potentially you've got some negatives in there, um, one. I think a lot of people hate us anyway. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I can, and, yeah. and now all of a sudden we're all, we're, uh, as not just us, at Swansea Cardiff as well, but it's almost and as if, got... it's a, I can just see the comments already. Oh my God, Wrexham think they can do what they want. And uh, because all of a sudden, like in some cartoon, we've had a back door painted for us to get into Europe, you know, because of our profile. Not saying that is the reason, but it's almost as if we've had this created to help us get into a European competition that we're never going to qualify for. That's what I can hear people saying. I'm yes. not saying that is my opinion. I can just hear people saying it already. Um, so, yeah, there's that. There, in addition to that, um, you've also got the extra games that are required to be in a... Um, a, a a, a cup competition in Europe. Exactly. These are games that we don't have to play at the moment and all of a sudden, what do you do? Do you put, do you, do you, do you treat it a little bit like an EFL trophy where you're putting like a second string sort of team out? Yeah. But if you haven't qualified for Europe for years and years and years, don't you sort of want to give it your all and, and go out there and put your best team out? Maybe. I, I don't know. Um so, yeah, I, it does concern me, uh, the, the sort of additional games that you would have to play. Um, yeah. I also worry a little bit. Um, so, TNS, uh, so the New Saints, they play in the uh, JD Premier, which is the, the top Welsh league at the moment. Um, they've qualified for the Europa Conference League this season for the group stages. They've qualified. Um, what I worry about slightly is teams like that losing out on the opportunity to qualify because all of a sudden you've got championship league one and league two clubs in there are you sort of stifling their development a little bit to mm. get into to, to have a chance of getting into it um although many people might argue that uh, tns are, are perhaps um sort of uh, slightly uh, superior to a lot of teams in that league anyway so it's already a little bit of an unfair competition I don't know. But yeah, um, so uh, th there are a lot of negatives for me from this. Having said that, um, I would love... I have been to European games. Um, Abroad? Uh, no, no. no. Uh, at the race course, I've been to European nights. My dad used to take me when we were playing in European Cup competitions. I think it used to be the European Cup Winners' Cup. It was called. That, that sounds familiar. That, that, that we used to be in yeah. because we used to win the Welsh Cup. So when we won the Welsh Cup, we, we used to go. Um, we've obviously had really historic nights as Wrexham playing in Europe. We've beaten Porto 
uh, you know, in the past, one of the biggest ones, I think, probably for us. So, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. I'd love to see Wrexham in Europe. Uh, but maybe we are... At to what cost? Though? Yeah, th th that's the side of it I'm not sure about. Is yeah. it going to be to the detriment of the season that we're in if if we if we won the competition and if we were to qualify for the group stages? You know, how much is this taken out of this squad? Mm -hmm. that's, that would be my concern. Um, the hatred from other people, not really that bothered about that. Give two hoops about. <laughs> not really. I'm not bothered by that too much. Um, but... Yeah, I, 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 it's a strange one for me, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I feel about it because the thought of Europe, Rex and playing European football really excites me, and the, you know, the thought of oh, I'd love to go, you know, to see that and 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 get to get to experience that again, yeah. like I have in the past. At the same time, on the flip side of that is, I, I'm sort of like, oh, let's leave that alone because I'm not sure it's gonna it's gonna help the club. It's just another massively. thing, isn't it? Yeah, it it, it is, and um, you know, you, you could perhaps argue if you were gonna play in this cup competition, because what you have to bear in mind is, let's say we played in it and we won it and we qualified for Europe, uh -huh. yeah, uh, for the Europa Conference League. So that following season, when you've qualified, you would have the additional games of the Europa Conference League. You would also, on top of that, have the additional games of uh, competing in the Welsh Cup again. Yeah. So, y y you, uh, you know, winning it is, al is almost like a, a huge negative and a huge positive all rolled into one because all of them extra games that you're then having to play, how do you manage that as a squad? Yeah. And I think that's what concerns me. I'm a little bit with you on this one. Uh, let's just focus on the project that we've got ongoing at the moment. I would love to compete in Europe, but I don't want it to be at the detriment of what we're actually the project that we're that we're creating which is, let's call it project premier league you know where, where that's that's the aim and that's where we're trying to get and if if doing something something like this is going to be to the, to the detriment of that project maybe just leave it alone yeah. but we don't know we'd love to hear your thoughts on this whether you, you believe that Wrexham should uh, be in this competition? Do you think it's fair? Do you think we, you know, we should be pursuing this? Would you like to see us in Europe? How do you think, you know, um, managing games in Europe and games in a Welsh Cup might it might be um, might be a good or bad thing for the club? I'd love to hear your thoughts because I think it's a it is a fascinating subject. Um, Not but sure it's fascinating. I, it is for me, but I, I just find <laughs> I just I just find it such a complex sort of situation. Yeah. Perhaps. Should we move on to the Stevenage game? Yeah, then? why not? So um, yeah, we were uh, on the actual day. I th I'm sure it was about quarter to five or something, and they announced it might have been earlier than that actually, and they announced that they were having a pitch inspection mm -hmm. at half past five. So we weren't sure. Um, that the game was going ahead, but I believe somebody who lives near Stevenage uh, put a comment on something and said that he lives close by to the ground um, and it's not been raining there or something like that. And it, it, I think what he said was um, he was looking across at like a park and he said that the the, gra the the rain was sitting quite heavy on the on like the roads, but, the but grass not right. so the grass seemed fine. Yeah. So he said he, he wasn't guaranteeing it was going to be on. He was nothing to do with the club, but he said he thinks it'd be okay. And there was no rain planned. They did the pitch inspection, and it was, and it was fine. Yes. Who was that guy? Who was the commentator? Was it Mouse or Moose? Moose, I Moose. think. Yeah. Um, he came on and said, "Yeah, the game's on." Um, he was commentator for Stevenage, so I believe it's yeah, something I, to do with the club. Anyway, it is. Yeah, I I was a little bit concerned because I I watched the video of the ref <laughs> testing the pitch, and the ball was rolling okay, but when he was trying to bounce it, it wasn't really bouncing. Mm. I was a little bit concerned. But fair play to all the staff at Stevenage. They sort of brushed, squeegeed, squeegeed, squeegeed the pitch and they got it, they got it ready. And it was, you know, I, a part of me wishes they hadn't. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I'm honest. Yeah, but definitely. There we go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, look, Evan started with Dobson in the middle. Yep. Uh, didn't work for me. And, and uh, look, if Phil Parkinson would listen to this podcast, I did warn <laughs> that I didn't think this was going to work. <laughs> and as it turns out, I was correct. 
Um, no, I, I just don't think. I think you you ended up with two two people who were very defensively minded in there, and I, I, it just didn't work for me. But anyway, um, Seb started on the left, um, McLean in the middle, Marriott and Fletcher up front, and then we had Mullin, Palmer, Lee, and Cannon on the bench. That's a bench for you, though, isn't it? That is. If you want a bench, that's a bench. That's a bench and a half. However, I, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm However, just, I'm not sure that the the the, the start in eleven was balanced enough. Yeah, it didn't feel right to me. Um, uh, I'm I'm not a fan of Fletcher starting games. That maybe that's controversial. I don't know. I just don't like him starting games. I he's think he's the impact player, isn't he? That we want to come on in the last yes, twenty whatever minutes. I find him quite ineffective mm. when he when he is uh, when he starts games. Um, and I, I, th I think maybe from memory, um, he was quite ineffective in this as well. Mm. And I think what you want, I think you want Stephen Fletcher in that last half an hour or last 20 minutes to just, yep. to, just when the defenders are starting to tire a little bit, you see him coming on, your shoulders sink and you go, oh, oh, am, I, am I dealing with this? And that's what you want, I think, in that last half an hour from him. Just not a starter for me. No. Obviously, he's had a great career of plenty of starts. I just don't think that's that's what we need at the moment. I think we need younger legs up there in the early part of a game. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Thanks. I agree. Thank you. Mm. Uh, we had the first chance of the game, didn't we? So um, Jack Marriott um, sort of wriggled free. Uh, he had a shot, just clipped the top of the bar. Mm. That's about as good as it got, I yep. think, really, pretty uh, much. End of subject. End. So let's move on. <laughs> yeah, they, um, well, look, they went 1-0 up, didn't they? Yeah. Ten, 10 minutes in, I think. Uh, the lad pinged a shot from 25, 30 yards-ish. Um, so, a big question here, and this might be me being really, um, really harsh. Do you think Arsha, Ar Arsha? Not Arsha. Do you think Arthur should have got down quicker to it? He is coming from some height, though, isn't he? Bless him. Yeah, I know. It might take him a bit of time, you know, than the average, uh, average sized man. Um, I don't know. I I don't like criticizing. I'm not saying you're criticizing, but I don't. I, I, like... I'm not really. It's just a question yeah, because no, I, don't, I, I, I don't saw know. the yeah, I saw the two sides of it online. People going, "Are you mental?" No, it, that was a well hit shot. It was right in the corner. There was no chance he was getting down to that. And then the flip side of that was a lot of people going, "I think he could have got down a bit quicker." Um, so I, I just I do you know what it makes me laugh are these comments of people saying y you could have done better and it's like uh, you know ne they've never played football in their lives or never been a goalkeeper in their lives and this is pointing to you as well um, <laughs> do you know what I mean it's like you know he did his best I played, I played in goal once or twice oh Christ <laughs> um, yeah so I I'm not one for criticising. No, no, like games. I said, I wasn't criticising. No, I know, but I, I people think, do, though. Yeah, they do. And I think um, I, I think Arthur's style um, and his general demeanour is quite laid back. You and him would get on well, you well. Well, Yeah, I think we would. Um, <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, I think sometimes he looks like he's a little bit slow, but he, yeah. he gets the job done. Yeah. Which, so, for me... I, when something does beat him from distance like that, I do often think, you know, he, he might... I think he's just got that sort of lazy, slow style about him. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I think that's just how it looks. Maybe. But I don't... I, I sort of agree... I'm on the side of... I don't think he was stopping that, personally. No. I, I think it was right in the corner, uh, some decent speed on it. I, I don't think many keepers were stopping that, if I'm if I'm perfectly honest. But, yeah, 1-0... 10 minutes in. Um, I think the the beauty of being 1-0 down after just 10 minutes is you've got a lot of the game to get back in, haven't you? Mm. It's not like you're going 1-0 down with five, min five minutes to go. No. You've still got 80 minutes of the game to go. Um, I, to be honest, I, based on the performance, I think we could have had 800 minutes and I'm not sure we'd have got an equaliser, <laughs> but there we go. Um, <laughs> yeah. Look, they had a couple of chances to make it two. In the first half, they didn't take any of them. They had a shot from distance that Arthur saved quite well. Um, they also had one where the just before half time, the ball came across and they blazed it over. Um, they they were a team that prior to this game had the best defensive record mm -hmm. in the league. Uh, for me, I after watching that game, I understood why. Yeah. Very well drilled, um, you know, and I, you know, I thought they were they, they were very good. They'd also scored 
not the fewest in the league, but they were one of the teams who'd scored the fewest in the league. And I sort of understood why that was the case mm-hmm. as well. They they created chances. They were good on the ball. But I didn't ever feel that they were going to score two, three, four. You know, I, I felt like we were going to stay in it for the majority of the game. I, I, they never looked like a team that were going to score loads yeah. in a game. Let's put it like that. I think perhaps they've only... They're still in single figures after 10 games. I think they're still in single figures for goals as well. So, you know, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, um, I wasn't all doom and gloom during the game, even though nothing seemed to work. We never really seemed to play very well. Away. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, that's, okay. Yeah, that's a point. But we never seemed to play, uh, I'm going to extend on that a little. (laughs) We never seem to play well away when the weather's poor. You think back at, you know, when it's been rainy and misty and horrible. Forest Green away last season, prime example, rainy, misty. They're bottom of the league and they, they're beating us for yeah. 80, 88, 89 yeah. minutes of the game. And they were probably, you know, and I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if the lads are just a little bit. They struggle a little bit with the weather. Maybe they're worried about the hair and stuff. I uh, no, I think it's more that we're a very bo- uh, We like we like playing football. Yeah. You know, uh, when we're not playing well, we play the long balls. But when we are playing well, we like it on the floor and we like to move it around. Yeah. Um, when the ground doesn't really isn't really conducive to playing that sort of football. Yeah then I think we sort of fall apart a little bit and we don't really know what to do and we struggle yeah. to pick a pass and, and and I think we slightly try and lift the ball off the ground a little bit and then passes go astray here, there and everywhere. And I just think we struggle when it, when the ground's not the best, if I'm honest. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, maybe, I don't know. Look, second half... A bit doom then, really, as we're coming into winter. Yeah, I know, it's not <laughs> great, is it? Um, yeah, oh, oh, sorry, not second half. Disaster. Obviously, for George Evans, uh, end of the half, he went over on his ankle. He sort of tackled the lad. The lad sort of fell on him, twisted his ankle. Yeah. Um, you were saying he's got surgery this week. Yes, I uh, I read that uh, Phil Parkinson has. Um, I'm not. It's, I don't think it's on the website or anything like that. But I believe. Yeah. Um, that uh, Evans will be going in for surgery this week. Um, okay on his ankle so yeah. and he will be out for some time because obviously he needs time to recover and then he needs time to get back his fitness and blah you know so so on so, so on. on and so forth so yeah we're not sure when he's going to be back but uh, we wish you all the best George. yeah Leo got in touch he said don't see how we can rest Dobson now hope he won't get any suspensions we hope in there uh, gutted for Evans yeah I'm, I'm gutted really because he, he, he did have a little bit of a problem at the start of the season mm-hmm. hence why Dobson came in Dobson's been fantastic we haven't really missed George yeah. too much uh, but he finally gets back in the team and um, obviously this happens and he's going to spend quite a little bit of time out um, he does like being off at Christmas though George Evans um, so, ah. so there, there we go it's it it's, it's probably suits it him like, yeah he got sent off last year just before Christmas, didn't he? So he oh, missed yeah. them. Yeah, but that was a yellow card. That wasn't anything. Yeah, card, so. um, I, I think we, we got to half time and I think we both sort of agreed Stevenage were on top. Yeah. Stevenage deserved to be on top. We said that within, in, uh, within, through gritted teeth. Through gritted teeth, yes. Yeah, we definitely did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think they deserved their 1-0 lead. I think they yeah. were the only ones, apart from that Marriott chance early on, which you couldn't really call a chance. He, you know, he was... Yeah, it was what it was. But, I mean, it's... Um, yeah, I, th- I felt like they definitely deserved it. Um, triple change just after the hour. Uh, Palmer, Mullin and Lee all coming on. And I found myself doing this. Right, they were coming on and I went, here we go. Mm. Here we go. She and wasted your breath. I, yeah. And you sort of sunk back into the sofa again. Within, it was like, oh, for Christ's sake. Within five minutes, it was just sort of like, <laughs> oh... Yeah. Hasn't really hasn't really changed anything. You brought the big guns on, hoping for a big reaction and I think that's what Parky was hoping as well, to be fair. Yeah. And that's why he did it. But yeah. It just didn't really happen for us. We had no. one shot on target all game, which was an Elliot Lee header that I mean it was it we might as well have been a pass back to be honest. It wasn't you know, it didn't really feel like uh, anything 
uh, was going to come of that. Um, we had lots of the ball in the second half. Uh, you know, we we were a bit better in the second half. We were, we worked it wide, but there's yeah. so, so many misplaced passes, and, yeah. and you know, it, it just felt like it was never going to happen for us. And if, it didn't. <laughs> And it didn't. And no, it didn't. You, you know they. You know they. They've got Carl Pierre Gianni um, in the the middle of their defence. Uh, Stevenage now, very good player. Lots of experience. Uh, I remember him uh, playing for Salford. Uh, so I remember we went. Me and my dad went to a game on Boxing Day. Wrexham played Salford, beat him 5-1. He was the one who scored. I mean, that's not a glowing reference for a defender, is it? When you talk about a game where they got beat 5-1, but um, he scored the one. <laughs> anyway, great. he's a great player. <laughs> he, he, he was sort of, he, he, he was instrumental in getting uh, Salford. Johnny, I like that name. Yeah, he was, he was um, instrumental in getting uh, Salford promoted. So, And he's, he's, he's got lots of experience. He's, he's a decent defender. And it, another no-nonsense non defender, really. Yeah. And, yeah, they were just very solid. Mm. I thought they, they... I sort of felt like they out wrexham does in the sense of, you know, they were very organised, difficult to break down. Yeah. And it just felt like they were a better version of Wrexham than we were. Yeah, really, sadly. if I'm honest. Sadly. Um, just a quick shout-out for the Stevenage commentary that Ugh. we had to listen to during the game. Um, you're awful absolutely off I have never met or heard I've never met you but I've never heard two more biased commentators oh I my get god. that you're Stevenage fans but my god you were you were you were being really negative towards Wrexham fans, negative towards our owners, and it's just not professional at all. It was just, oh, it was, it was awful. Abysmal. It was really bad, and I mean, it got to the point where it was like they they had they were watching the games through such rose tinted yeah. glasses of going, why isn't that a foul? It's not a foul, mate, because it's not a foul. And then we were getting fouls, and then the. Uh, uh, and then they were going, oh, that's not a free kick. And it's like, oh, my God, it's like listening to two miserable old blokes down the pub. It was horrendous that we had to sit through it. My dad was watching the game at his house. Uh, and um, he he said he had to mute them in the end. Well, I spoke to somebody in work and they said exactly the same. He said he got, he got halfway through it and he was just like, I can't listen to this drivel anymore. No, I, um, there was one thing, just one thing before we move on from this, uh, the, the abysmal. Um, um, Stevenage, I saw a comment, I'm not going to name this person, but I, I saw a comment on Twitter um, about a guy, it sort of, he was going to town at the a poor performance. Of us? Uh, our poor performance. A Wrexham fan? Yes. Okay. Uh, and basically what he ended the comment with was saying that he was urging the club to refund fans for travel, paying for tickets and travelling to the Stevenage game. Um... I don't know where to start with that comment, but that's that's insane. That is absolutely insane. There is there's no there's no room for that. I mean, we're going to lose games. We're going to have games when we're amazing. We're going to win lots of games this season. We're going to lose games this season, and we're also going to have quite a few performances where we're not very good. That does not mean that the fans who go to them games deserve a refund. And a lot of Wrexham fans were shutting him down by going, shut what? up. Uh, for me, calm down and grow up. Um, you, can't, you can't say fans deserve a refund because the team haven't played well. Um, I mean, imagine... That is football. Imagine supporting someone like Shrewsbury... Um, the, the club would never get any money because the fans <laughs> be would constantly be refunded. <laughs> That's just football. So, I think I think a lot of uh, not you know there are a few fans who feel very entitled and they feel we should be winning. Tell me about it. We should be winning every single game. Our performances should be five out of five. You know we should be whatever. And if they're not, they feel really like disgruntled about it. There's gonna it. be there's gonna be more performances like Stevenage. Trust me, there there will be because it's a long season. They're difficult games. There's gonna there's a lot of good teams in this league who are going to make us look, on occasions yeah. look very very average. So reiterate that message. Calm down and grow up. Okay, and let's move on from that one. It's gonna have a shot when we get to the championship, isn't it? It's gonna be even harder. 
Anyway, um, a quick. Uh, I say he. I actually don't know who it is. So it, it, it be... was a he. Oh, it was, was a he. he yeah. oh, right, okay. uh, Neil Walker, uh, Parky should adopt a more attacking strategy early in games and try and get a, a, an early lead. Uh, your banter about Sean answering comments from other fans in a sharp way instead of treating it as banter was absolutely gold dust moment. Really funny. Thank you, Neil. Um, look, I love the way he spelled my name. Yeah, no, wrong, but it, that's how. Yeah, it's how it sounds. a lot of people yeah. have spelt it like that. But Look, yeah. move on to Northampton. Um, we'll talk about this. Yes, back to some more positivity. Yeah, we had a great day on Saturday. We did. It was great. We uh, the, so, nice weather for an, Octo for o an October right. day. I had my big dry robe on. Uh, first time. <laughs> yeah, you did. Uh, first time in the uh, turf marquee. The fan which, zone. Oh, it's great. Def oh, it was amazing. Going back there again. We we normally if we go to the turf, we go to the turf yes. and we either stand outside the turf or we go inside the turf um, we've never been to the marquee before but we will be frequenting it more often loved it loved it thought it was absolutely fantastic um, Danny Gruff was there who playing. played at our wedding he was there we had a little set of, we went and said hello because he played at our wedding yeah 13 years 11 years ago Sorry. <laughs> 13 is irrelevant to everything. We met 14 years ago. We got married 11 years ago. Yes. Yeah. So 13 doesn't We got matter. married in 2013. Ah, oh, there you our, go. Our anniversary of when we of we, when we started going out was July the thirteenth. So yeah, there is thirteen. There is thirteen. There. There I, I can be I can be excused from that. Yes, I guess. Uh, we met Peter. Met up with Peter from Austria. He he was in the fan zone. It was great to see Peter and have a yeah, chat with him. Yeah, we love Peter. Sky came over. I had a bit of a chat for a while, um, and that that was really fun. Uh, who else did we meet on Saturday? We met Ian and his dad. Um, Roy. Roy. We have met these people before. Though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. These aren't just random people no, to start speaking no, to. No, no, no. So, there was a guy called Bruce. Yes. He came up to us. You two busy nattering away. Yeah. But he did come up to us and he said that he listens to our podcast. Is it Bruce McFarlane? No. Oh, I don't okay. know, actually, because the picture of him doesn't look like the guy who... Okay. So I don't know. Yeah. Um, if it is McFarlane. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think McFarlane might be American. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Or Australia, all right. Whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he came over and he said he loved, he listens to our podcast all the time. Yeah. Um, so that was really... And it was really nice to meet him. And then we saw him... When we were leaving as well, yeah. Um, so I had a quick chat with him again. Somebody as well, somebody who uh, there was. Uh, uh, we were we were looking for. We knew Peter had come over from Austria, and we were trying to find Peter. Um, so we went into the turf first, and we were trying to look, and it was really busy. Somebody, and I'm going to apologise now. Somebody said, just shouted at me. I uh, love the podcast. And I just turned and went, thank you very much. I wasn't quite sure who said it. And I just sort of went, thank you very much. And I didn't want to stand there like an idiot looking round. So Are I, they an international fan? Or? Yeah, they sounded American. Um, See, I get confused by the American and Canadian. Yeah, I know that's I know. a really yeah, yeah, yeah. bad thing, but, I, I, but, I do. but yeah, they were North American. Um, so, um, so, so, yes. Yeah, if that was you, I am sorry. I, that Let us know then. who you are. Yes. If you, yeah. Yes, please do. Um, three changes. Yep. Uh, Cannon, Palmer, Cannon and, and Lee. <laughs> Cannon and Goal, Sean said. Yeah, <laughs> bit weirdly. Uh, Cannon, Palmer, and Lee came back in. Uh, Seb and uh, Stephen Fletcher dropped back to the bench. Obviously, Evans out uh, with his injury. Mm -hmm. um, I said before the game, it was more important f for me to put in a good performance, and we that I said I would have be happy with a, a 1-0, mm -hmm. as long as the performance level was there yeah. and and that we looked good and we looked sharp and we were passing it well and we were getting the ball forward. I, you know, if if in the final third it wasn't coming off for us, but we were creating them chances and we, we walked away from the game winning 1-0, for me, the performance was the most important thing on Saturday. Um, and I don't think they failed you. They did not. They did not. I think they were superb mm -hmm. um, uh, from the very first whistle. I thought they were brilliant. They were. Um, we, we started really quick. We started pumping balls out to Barney nice and early. Got him beating his man. Uh, he, he had one that went into the box that didn't quite come off. The next one he put in, seven minutes. Uh, McLean was on the end of it. Um, they, I listened to their interview uh, after the game, Barney's and um, and uh, Jimmy's, and they, they were basically saying they've talked a little bit about both being wing-backs, getting the ball right over to the other one when they're crossing yeah. in. 
worked perfectly on yeah. on Saturday. Absolutely did. So we went one nil. Band of brothers, they were. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was it was a great start, but it, I think what we realised quite early on that Northampton weren't going to just roll over. Yeah. They brought loads of fans, didn't they? They did. They did. To be fair, and they were loud, which you know. You, you'd expect you, that's what you expect don't you but um i made a note actually uh whilst we were playing yes um and i don't know where is it um yeah in the 21st i don't know if you've put this in your notes actually i haven't read them um in the 21st you haven't read the notes i have sort of ah. um yeah in the 21st minute uh, their number nine, I think his name is Eves. Yeah. Eves or yeah, yeah. just Eves. Yeah. Um, he clearly pulled O'Connor over. Yeah. Clearly, when he was on the side of the. Um, At a corner. In, the, in our box or their box. I can't remember. Oh, well, it was the first half, so it would have been their box. Yeah. Okay. Because we were. Yeah. 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 What do you th- how do you feel about shirt pulling? I think it's diabolical. Uh, no, yeah, so basically, yeah, I don't, I was, um, yeah, so he clearly pulled out, o- this is the comment that I put, he clearly pulled O'Connor over, O'Connor like did a backflip or something, because yeah. he pulled him with that much force, and then Eves was like, well, the, the ref blew the whistle, and Eves was like, what did I do? He was yeah. like shocked that the referee had blown the whistle. Yeah. I watched him quite a bit during the game. Yeah. And he did do a lot of shirt pulling. Um, I thought he was quite an aggressive player, which, you know, if you're the opposing team... Big, you, big brutish striker, you do want it, You do want your players to be aggressive, but I just think he was a bit over the top. Um, and I... Yeah, he just he just caught my eye, but in the wrong... I in think the worst it, way. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, I, think, I think he did a good job for him, to be fair. Big lad... Um, he did what he needed to do. He held the ball up well at times. I thought he was all right. Um, I, shirt pulling's an interesting one for me because I think outside of the box, you expect a little bit of shirt pulling, a little bit of argy-bargy, a little bit of pushing around, all that sort of stuff. You know, that's part and parcel of football. In the box is a weird one uh, for, for me because... Um, I don't know. I think there just needs to be clearer lines drawn when it comes to you know what's a penalty, what's not a penalty, what's allowed, what's not allowed, all that sort of thing. Because I think it's it's become such a grey area these days that um, there was yeah. also another incident with uh, Palmer. Um, I can't remember what happened, but I felt that that guy. I, I don't know if he got. Uh, there was only one yellow for each mm. team, so I don't know whether he. Got a, he anything happened, but basically, um, Palmer went over, yeah, belly flopped to the floor, yeah, um, like he like he does, yeah, and uh, nothing happened. But for me, and I might be completely wrong, you know, being a yeah, a new I can't say newbie anymore, can I? Not really. Um, that he was obviously Palmer had the ball and he was heading obviously towards the goal. Yeah. For me, he was. He was he was stop. I, I don't know what it's called, but he was basically stopping him. Yeah. From, um, I know they're supposed to stop them from scoring <laughs> goals. I'm not saying that, but I, I'm trying. Please help me out. I don't know what you're trying to say. So are you are you are you asking about it being a yellow card or whether you know it should be stronger punishment or was there even a free kick given? I can't remember. <laughs> But no, this what I'm is, saying... You're no. giving me so little information. I'm finding it really hard to help you what out here. What I'm saying here. is he, he um, sort of fouled Palmer. Yeah. I don't think he did get a yellow card. I might be wrong. But he was... I thought there was a rule that you can't, you can't do something to a player if they are heading towards the goal or something. Do you know what I'm is trying it, to say? Right, I get what you're trying to say. Now, it, it's so bad to explain myself. So if, but... if you're clean through, yes. heading towards goal, it depends on the type of foul that you make. I, I think I know the incident you're talking about. It was just a free kick and it wasn't a yellow card. Right. So if you're clean through, for example, yes. um, and then uh, it, there are certain scenarios where it could be a straight red card. There are certain scenarios when it's just the yellow. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, so th- there's that. This incident wasn't. He wasn't clean through, but he was. He okay. was on the attack. Um, now, again, there's certain sort of instances. If a team are breaking away and there's loads of them piling forward, and you're outnumbered, and um, th- in a scenario where they go, that's a good. That's a good yellow to take. Right. That's when you're taking a player out. 
to stop them to stop them being five on two or okay. something like that. Okay. That's a yellow card, and okay. that's the sort of scenario there. But um, but if it's just if you're just heading towards goal and there's loads of defenders in front of you and you foul somebody, generally that's not really a okay. yellow card. Depends on the severity of the tackle. Okay, I would say. Um, I I think um, Palmer may have um, over dramatised it a little bit. Ollie did just a little bit. Okay. The way he went just down, a it, touch, was like, yeah? it was like one of those <laughs> like a dying swan. <laughs> it's like one of those uh, comical uh, sketches where you fall over your feet and yeah. you're just like <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I would say so. Yeah. Look, twenty seventh minute, um, they equalised. Um, I've I've watched it a couple of times. Uh, Dobbo lost his man. Basically, uh, mm. Dobson was on him in the middle. Uh, Dobson got dr drawn to the ball. Proper uh, under 10s sort of moment where you're just looking at the ball and you're following that. His man peeled off at the back, completely free. Um, and uh, he made it one all. Um, and, you know, they, like I said, they weren't going away. You know, they were mm. they were definitely there to get something out of the game. Um, normal service was resumed for McLean. Not yeah. long after that, we got an, no, I mean, when he got a yellow card. Uh, so he's back. Oh, he's at, the one who got the yellow card. Yeah, I he's, he's back. He's back on yellow card duty now. Uh, so <laughs> that's he's, his first one though since he became captain. I'm sure it is. It's his third this season, which is, you know, going in the right direction for it's him. Not bad. It's not bad for James. It's not bad. Yeah. It's not. No. Um, look, we kept feeding Barney all game. He I thought was he was. Immense. He was. He was fantastic. So um, and uh, another ball in from him. It was laid back by McLean. Uh, and Marriott uh, scored another goal for him. Absolutely fantastic, two one up. I, I think that we deserved, um, we deserved to be two one up. Second half, a Welshman nearly did for us. So Tyler Roberts um, had a shot from the edge of the box uh, for Northampton. Well saved by Arthur. A few minutes later, another Barney cross. Lee header, three one, and a, a big smile. From oh, I yes, talking of um Elliot, I um obviously the Wrexham guys, um Wrexham Club, sorry, the club, put a post on saying look at that smile or whatever. Yeah. Um and I shared it and I said I think he needed that. And there was You've lots... said that more than once about him this season though. And I was talking to somebody before the game. Because I think you said it a few weeks ago when he scored. You said I think he needed that, and then he had. He's obviously had a couple of poor performances. And, he's... Later, and then, <laughs> and then you he sort of felt like he needed it again. I do, and I think McLean needed it as well. I think he's he admitted yeah. in his interview that he hasn't been as good as you know he knows that he could be. Yeah. Um, and I think the fact that he scored, what he scored one or two. Two. He scored two, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, well. We'll come on to that in yeah. a second. Um, he definitely scored one. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I think when players have a game like they had at Birmingham and the Stevenage game, I think they, I think when they score, um, I do, I think they need it. But there was a lot of people, um, I think it was Ben Parker said that he, um, he said exactly the same thing um, that he, you know, he's had. You know, he's had a bit of a rough trot of it recently. Yeah, look, we focused on them two very players for that very reason last week. Mm. We talked about Elliot Lee and we talked about James McLean because yeah. they, they were they were getting a little bit of a, a abuse. Um, look, we um, we made it safe. Sixty-seven minutes um, cross from who? Of course, Barney, Barney. again. Uh, McLean volley. Um, look, I've. Uh, we've we've looked at it a couple of times. It is clearly an own goal. Yeah. So McLean's exactly. volley is going wide. It hits a defender and then goes in. Um, I thought I wasn't a little unsure who it was. I've, I've seen the replays. Definitely, it's a defender. Um, so the rules for anybody who's not aware: if you have a shot and that shot is on target and it hits a defender, it can go in the complete opposite direction and go in. As long as your initial shot is on target, you still get the goal. If your shot is off target and it hits a defender and then goes in, that's an own goal because your shot was never going in in the first place. Uh, McLean's shot was never going in. Um, it, it's not it, down as an own goal. It though. is not down as an own goal. Really nice for Jimmy. I'm more than happy for him to collect two goals from that game. Uh, but 
if we, you know, if we, you know, we'll shut up about it. But it was definitely an own goal. Let's put it like that. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Mullen look, came on. Yeah, he did. Yeah, I, do you know what? I was gutted for him. Yeah. It was like literally in the last few minutes. I think it was literally in the last minute. Yeah, and he headed it towards the goal, um, but the, the keeper saved it, and I was gutted for him. I, I think that was literally was the whistle went straight. Literally, after him. Yeah, yeah, he he kind of yeah composed himself, got up, and the whistle went. So yeah. Um, look, um, Barney was the man of the match. Um, he fully deserved it. It was the Absolutely. first one I turned to you and I said, the first one the sponsors have got right yeah. for a long and time. And it's, again, it's the same sponsors. They must have like, a, they must have, they must be the man of the match sponsor every game this maybe, season. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. But every home game, should I say. Look, Barney was involved in all four goals. He got three assists. Um, he was absolutely fantastic. He was. I think. Um, the, I, I think for me, he was, you know, absolutely superb. I, I just wanted to read out a quick comment just before we go on to the next bit. This is from um, Christian Bielek, uh, who is a defender for Birmingham. Okay, uh, this is a comment he made last week. Uh, he said, "We're League One, but I don't think there are any players in this team who are League One players." Uh, all of them are at a higher level. In six months' time, we'll be a championship team and a different animal. We stay humble <laughs> and keep our feet wow. on the ground and we don't want to choke. But the reality is we're too good for League One. What happened yesterday, uh, Birmingham, well, with on that, Saturday? With that in mind, I think somebody might need to explain uh, uh, to him what the word humble means. <laughs> <laughs> to say we stay humble, but the reality is we are too good for League One. I think somebody might need to explain the word humble. With I all think that, arrogance, the word. Yeah, with all that in mind, let's have a look at uh, Saturday's results. So Charlton beat Birmingham one uh, nil. Um, uh, I think there was there was a few others that sort of stood out. Bolton came from two nil down to draw two all with Shrewsbury. Uh, Lincoln won again. Uh, Mansfield won again. Uh, Rotherham won 2 1 against Reading. Stockport drew. Wickham beat Crawley 1 0. Uh, Peterborough beat Stevenage 2 1. Uh, yeah, some, some quite interesting results. Uh, Birmingham stay top despite the defeat. Uh, we stay second on 20 points. Uh, Mansfield are also on 20 points in third place. Mm -hmm. um, they're behind us only on goal difference uh, and they have a game in hand as well. So oh, they're, God, they're yeah. doing really well, Mansfield. Uh, Lincoln two points back in fourth. Uh, Wickham fifth and Stockport sixth. Got a, we've got a comment actually that came through today. Yeah. Um, from a Birmingham fan. His name is Joe Swift, and he put great, great win for you, lot, Sha young Sean. Yeah, it's in. It's, it's, it's in here. Oh, is it? Yeah, it is in here. I have put it in. Yeah, Joe. Joe is your friend. That the one that you keep having to go at. Well, I'm going to have a go at him now because he spelled my name wrong. <laughs> Let's come on to it in a second. Oh, all right. So, Rick O'Brien um, has just made a, a point. He said, Barney is the most underrated player of the last two promotions, in my opinion. Yep. He is due a three-year contract offer. He's the stick that stirs the drink. I, like I, that. Lo I love that. Uh, even his mistakes on crosses create opportunities, and he's uh, selfish with the ball. Uh, great two-way player and a very tr and very tricky with the ball. I know you both are big on him and not a player you want to lose in 2025 in League One or the Championship. Uh, still really weird to be referring to Wrexham and the Championship. Uh, safe travels uh, from Ontario, Canada. Love him. We both love him. Uh, Rick, we think he's fantastic. I do. His contract does come to an end at the end of the season, so I would like. To, I think we're going to see some definite movement uh, with getting him signed up for. A, for I a, hope so. Uh, for a, you know, we just got to be I ridiculous think the club would if be we stupid. didn't. Um, underrated I'm not sure he's uh, very well revered I think, I uh, think by, by is, most but... Wrexham fans but yeah perhaps a point yeah. uh, you know over the last two seasons I think he is definitely championship quality and a player that we need to be holding on to um, I completely agree mm -hmm. Rick I completely agree with with all of it I think maybe he has been a little bit underrated not not by us because I think he's absolutely fantastic and um, yeah a player that I'd love to see you know it's difficult isn't it we bought him while in the national league from a national league club 
it's sometimes you don't know where the players are going to be able to make that transition up the leagues. But he definitely has. Definitely 100% has. He, he, he was great in League 2. He's been great in League 1. And I think if we did go up, I think he'd be great in the Championship as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, 100%. Yes. 100% on that one. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Uh, just on, on Elliot Lee, Ben Parker said, uh, I know you mentioned it earlier, but he said, I, I saw an initial slight shoulder slump when Marriott scored. Uh, just, to, just to explain that a little bit, but basically the ball come back and it, it, if Marriott wasn't there, it would have come to Elliot and Elliot was ready to sort of have a shot. And when Marriott scored, I, I saw what Ben was talking about. His, his shoulders did sink a little bit. Oh, I never noticed Yeah, that. a little bit because he, I think he thought, I need this goal. He needs that. That's he needs right. that. He, he needs does it. Needs it. Uh, before he rightly started cheering on the fact that Marriott had scored. Uh, but I'm stoked he got this one. Very well deserved. And Jay said he'd had a rough few games for sure. Not been strong in possession of late. But he's back. He's Here back. we go. My mate Joe. Um, <laughs> great win for your lot, young Sean. S I A N. S I A N. Wheels back on the cart. We Blues got well beaten today and have to take our medicine. All 11 left their worst performance of the season for the Charlton game. But to be fair to them, they were excellent today. Joe, I, that's why I like you, Joe, um, because I, I think you just, as a football fan, you've always got to be honest. And I think he's being honest there, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, but sometimes they're not, are they? D- look, Joe, just to let you know, you're not going to get you're not going to get your comments read out every week. But I just I felt like it was <laughs> worthwhile uh, putting it on. Uh, OHP one seven zero. That's nine straight at home, going back to last year, and a mind boggling seventy two. Uh, 13 and 6 since Parky took over, which is amazing. Um, mind numbing? Does that? Does he mean like mind blowing? I, I, yeah, I think so. Does mind numbing mean yeah, no. crap, doesn't it? My, over yeah. here. I think I said mind boggling. Numbing, he put it. Yeah, I know. Uh, John Well sounded great. Uh, sounded a great game after two toughies away. Listening from the slayings on the coast at North Norfolk. Well, well, Wells ne- next the sea. Is that a place? Must be, yeah. Never heard of that. Um, they gave a goal to Palmer on BBC Sport when I follow said it was Marriott. Yeah, it was Marriott. It was definitely Marriott. I, I noticed that on Sofa Score they give it to Palmer as well for some reason. I don't know, but they quickly uh, changed it. We've them. learned not to listen to Sofa yeah. Score. They're not very good. Uh, Kiwi Anon Just Looking um, said, next uh, next best thing to being there is you guys. Oh, thank you. Uh, mm. Thanks for making us all as randoms feel like friends of both of you and the club. <gasps> Oh, thank you very you are much. Absolutely welcome. Yes. Uh, Tina Michelle, thanks for the stream. As North Walian people get it, unleash the dragon. Yes, 100%. Look, if you want to get in touch, you can get in touch on X, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, threads, or email us at me, the wife, and Wrexham AFC at gmail.com. Mine doesn't trust me to do that bit anymore. I do not. Uh, <laughs> quick quick uh, update on the fancy EFL. Uh, first this week, we've got Kay G- Gulliford. Uh, Drew is in second place and D Roberts in third. Um, I'm not going to do the usual customary Christian versus Ryan update. Um, because we know that you two are like Christ- battling together. Yeah, because Christian's in the lead at the moment. So <laughs> uh, look, we got got uh, Wolves uh, under 21s on Tuesday in the EFL Trophy. Yeah. Um, and obviously our next game in the league with Lincoln has been postponed, as Sean mentioned earlier, because of international call-ups. Um, so our next league game is going to be the 19th of October, which seems ages away. It'll soon be here, lads. It will soon be here. Um, so, yeah, we're playing Wolves under 21. It's our second game in the competition. Uh, they drew their first game with Port Vale. Um, I don't really... I'm not... Uh, that's Tuesday, it. It's at the Stoke Kairos. On past, Tuesday. Half past seven. Yeah. Tickets available, I, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, we don't care. No, I'm not. I really not. I, it's, it's, it's just one, one of them, them games. Yeah. Look, quick shout out for Dragon Chat before we do the quiz. It's a mental health peer support group. They run two weekly Zoom calls, one on a Monday at 8 p.m. and that is for women. And the other one is on Thursday at 7 p.m. and that is for men. If you do want to get on the call and you're watching us on YouTube, all the details of how to get on the call are down in the description. If you would like to get on the call, and you don't know how to, just send us a message and we'll send you all the information across. Uh, or you can follow Steve Lloyd on Twitter, uh, which is at DragonChatWXMFC. Uh, 
Sorry. Are we not going to do our predictions for Wolves? I know we yes, don't care. Yes, yes. Yeah, we'll do our predictions, yes. I know 3-1. Uh, okay, I'll go 2-0. 2-0. All right. Yeah. Anyway, move on. Quiz time. Quiz time. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, question one. Yes. The Stevenage goal scorer on Tuesday shares his name with a singer in which famous British group? You're not even giving me options? Absolutely not, no. Michael so, Ball. <laughs> Wait, say, which the question, say the question. The I've got to name the, the... Yes, the band. Oh. The group, sorry. The Stevenage goal scorer on Tuesday shares his name with a singer in which famous British group? It's got to be a boy band, doesn't it? It doesn't have to be. Um, it's a group, so it's not anything that you would like. <laughs> Because you don't, you hate it when people call pop groups bands. Yes. Um, uh, oh, Gary Barlow. The, the band for the second time. I'll take that. Name the group. Not take that. No. Uh, the uh, the player was Louis Louis Thompson. Louis Tomlinson. Sorry. What what was his name? Can't remember. It's One Direction. Anyway. Uh, yeah. That, that's the yeah. answer. Uh, number two. Which one of the following is an anagram? of a Northampton player who started the game on Saturday. Let's go south, off to the north, travel west or move east? Move east. Yeah, who is it? Uh, well, it's number nine, Eves, isn't it? Yeah, Tom Eves. I don't know what his first name is. Well done. Thanks. Yeah, no worries. Number three. In our full-time live after the Northampton game, which country did I say had nice beaches? Brazil. It is Brazil. Well done, you were listening. Well done. Yeah. Number four, squad numbers. Oh, Christ. How's your, how good's your maths? You know how good my maths is. Okay. It's atrocious. Let's let's give it a go. Um, okay. No, I can't. Don't. I can't. Come on. It, I can't do maths on bloody Yes, you podcasts. can. You can. Start with Jack Marriott. Yeah. This is just in your head. Yes. Start with Jack Marriott. Yes. Add Ollie Palmer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Take away Andy Cannon. Yeah. Divide by Tom O'Connor. Yeah. And multiply by George Dobson. And what number do you get? I can go through it again if you need me to. Well, no, because I don't know if I've got the numbers right. Well, that's why I'd go through it again with you. Go on, then. Okay, start with Jack Marriott. Yes. Add Ollie Palmer. Yes. Take away Andy Cannon. Oh, I can't remember if Andy Cannon's changed his number or not. Okay, I'm just going to go with what I think. Yes. Okay. Divide by Tom O'Connor. <sighs> yeah. And multiply by George Dobson. What number do you get? I don't know. I can't. My brain hurts. Okay. Too. Start with Jack Marriott. 11. Add Ollie Palmer. 9. Which makes? 20. Yes. Take away Andy Cannon. I thought Andy Cannon's 20, but I don't know whether he still is. He's changed his number, hasn't he? He's 8. He's 8. Oh, well. That's I'm... 12. Divide by Tom O'Connor. 5. 6. Oh, that gives you 2. Yeah. Multiply by George Dobson. 23. No, that's 15. <laughs> So you end up with 30. You absolutely had no chance of getting that one right. Hey, I got, uh, got Mary and Palmer right. Well done. So, um, so, yeah, 30 was the answer for oh. anybody who was trying to do that at home. I hate maths. Number five. Well, it helps if you get the numbers right, though. You might have had a fighting chance. Yeah. Um, so, number five. We have tickets for the next four Wrexham League games. Away at Rotherham and Charlton. Yep. And home to Huddersfield and Mansfield. Uh -huh. Okay. From our house, how many miles will we travel to and from these four games? I've got options for you. Uh, okay. If it helps you, we're two miles from the race course. So you're talking about from our house? From our house to each game and back right. again. Yeah, give me an option then. Okay. 473 miles. 558 miles. 684 miles or 762 miles? 684. Correct. Well done. 684. Well done. You did... Um, got, all right, no. All right. Three. Yeah. Three out of five. I'd say that's decent. 
Thanks. If I'm honest, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too down on yourself. I think it's all right. <laughs> Look, thank you very much for joining us again this week. Um, thank you for all your support. And if you're not yet yeah. subscribed, head I, over I just, I would like to, sorry, when, when we read out the buy me a coffee stuff, I would like to also shout out uh, Two Beards podcast. Hey. Uh, on, uh, on Saturday when we were doing our live, they gave us a $20 donation. Um, which is much appreciated. I forgot to shout you out during the actual buy me a coffee bit. So thank you very much to you. Um, that is uh, that's brilliant. We have a we have a healthy little pot that we are using to buy some new equipment very soon. Um, we I think we've sorted the mic issue because um, we've been in touch with the manufacturer. Well, I say that. I don't know, I've watched it back yet, but I think I so. I try to keep an eye on it to see yeah, what Yeah, it happened. seems to be all right. It was yeah. a firmware issue, and I, I think we've updated it, and everything's okay now. But, yeah, fingers crossed. Anyway, thank you very much for joining us again this week, and we'll <laughs> see you again next week. Bye. Bye.